Hi everyone, welcome to the QA Ops channel. I'm Rafael Lima, and today we're going to be talking about shell script. Right? On previous, on the previous video, we used shell script to to simulate the creation of a log. But today we're going to be actually creating a script that can do something for us, right? And that can help us uh, on tooling, on our product productivity, can be on, on our individual productivity, or we could help the team achieve something that requires some manual work. So you, if you haven't watched the previous video, I'm going to be posted posting the video here. And I have been talking about GitHub and uh, and Git and Unix and, every, and all, of, all, all of that uh, Unix and command line world. So I'll be posting the playlist for you to follow up as well. And I'll be also posting the playlist for the Java. Java world that we did on rest assured and API test. So uh, with no further ado, let's start uh, creating our first script. So the first thing, this is the code that we used in the previous video, right? So the first thing that I'm going to do is uh, this is the repository that we used uh, last video to create the log. I changed the repository main branch from master to main uh, because main is more accurate than master. So now we're going to have a main branch and we're going to create our first script and the name of the script that I'm going to create is uh, intro shell script dot sh right that creates the file if you remember last uh, the last video that we talked about creating a file I, we need to execute this be able to execute this file so in order for that to happen we uh, we need to give it execution permission so I'm going to just give the X for execution permission now we can execute this file right so if we open here the file is already here I'm going to say that I want this file to be a bin bash file bin bash file right so it's going to use bash as the scripting language uh, so now the first thing that we're going to do is just make sure the script is being is executing. I'm going to do echo and the classic hello world. Right. So for, for me to execute dot slash and the name of the script and hello world was printed. Great. So now what we're going to do is we're going to start using that script receiving parameters, uh, be able to treat some of those uh, parameters. We're not going to be treating right now, but then you need to be able to put that on a variable and, and use uh, as you will. Right, so the first thing that I'm going to do is there are a few ways that we can receive a, a parameter, right? So the first one is I can say, I want to print the first parameter or the second or the third or the fourth right usually it's a good practice to put between double quotes so these uh prevents word splitting like shall confuse that you want to split the word the the word or use globbing and globbing is let's say i want to uh it's the use of wildcard so i want to print or to list everything that's sh ends with dot sh then I can use the the uh, the star the asterisk as a wild card, right? So that's glo globbing. So the double quote prevents this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to print the variable two. It could be the variable one, it could be the variable variable whatever I wanted to do, right? So if I do and if I execute that command again and I pass some parameter, I'm going to pass my name. This is the variable one. It was not printed, but if I print my second name, it's going to print my second name so because I'm printing the variable two. Right? I can also print everything. I can say echo, and now I want I use the at, and it's going to print everything for me. And if I use that uh, uh, in a variable, uh, that can be used as an array, right? So this this becomes an array. So if I do this so the first one was uh, the second parameter this second one was everything right so if I put another 
and another is going to return to me everything in this is as an array so I can loop through this that's awesome right so I also can print just everything but beginning from the second parameter so now it's not going to print everything it's going to skip Raphael so now it skipped Raphael awesome and I also can give it a default value right so let's say I want to print the second one let's do the first one but if there is, if I don't give it the first one I can just use a default value so I'm going to call it default value right so if I execute the intro shell and I pass something it's going to give me something if I don't pass something it's going to give me the default value right it printed everything because I'm telling it to print everything here but you can see that the default value was printed whenever I didn't give anything so you can use this in multiple ways uh, as you will right so what I'm going to do we're going to create a menu with this right so this is the first thing that I'm going to do and this is a switch case we're going to use switch case which is very common in any 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 programming language right so we're going to give menu option that's my variable menu option and you use uh, snake case which is the underscore you give it an uh, you're going to attribute it needs to be glued together the equal sign with everything needs to be everything glued together and I'm going to say this is going to be my first variable that's my menu and I'm saying okay now I'm going to use that variable and when I assign a variable I just use the, the the actual word but when I want to print that variable either use the value or print on the terminal I need to use the dollar sign so now I'm going to say option menu All right option menu option menu option case menu option in and now I'm going to give all the possible values that I want to give it right but I need to close the case and I close the case with ESEC and you see that uh, IntelliJ is helping a lot with this so what I'm going to do is I want to print the first value right so I'm going to give it a name of print var right and I stop the case with uh, double semicolons and I'm going to put this up here and I'm going to do the correct indentation I'm going to ignore this so all right so now when we do we print and we give it the option of the main menu right so it's print bar doesn't do anything because I I'm asking to print only the second variable right the print var is the first variable I need to pass a second variable second var so we printed second var great but it's it's nice to have a default value right so if I, I don't pass anything or if it does not recognize what I passed I can give a default value which is the star and I'm going to say echo wrong menu value and I'm going to close this right so if I if it doesn't understand now it says wrong menu value the semicolons here is very important right because if I forget the semicolon it's not going to break IntelliJ is, is complaining but if I pass so let's pass a correct value print var var it should print var but if I don't put this two double semicolons is going to not break and it's going to pass and it's going to do what sh what the next option is going to do uh, it actually did not let, let me awesome that's that's even better right so I know it was broken great 
Awesome. So now we're going to do the other one, right? I'm going to now give it a name of print all. And I'm going to bring this up here. Print all and I break. Awesome. Now when I do print all and one, two, three, four, and five, it's going to print in everything, including the print all, because I'm using the at if everything. Right, but note that we need we need to be typing a lot, right? So we can give it the menu a few other options. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the pipe and I'm going to say var. And now I'm going to use the pipe and I'm going to say all. So now each option has two options or more options. So the print all can be print all or it can be just all. It's going to execute the line, right? The second one needs print almost all and I'm going to give a second name of almost and it's at this exactly value here which I'm cho choosing just to print from the second parameter onwards so if I use almost now almost is going to ignore the first one which is my my switch options right and the last one is to print uh, the default value, right? So we're going to do print default value, and I'm going to say default value, default. Mm -hmm. And here is this one, I need to break. I'm going to execute default. And if I don't pass anything, it's just default. Uh, it's the first parameter or the full value. So the first parameter is always going to exist uh, if if it enters this case, right? Because it's already entering here. If the, the parameter, the first one does not exist, it's going to go into the star. So I need to just put two here, right? So if I don't pass a second parameter, now it's the default value. And the last one, which I forgot to show you uh, previously, is to print quantity of parameters. And I'm going to say quantity. And this one, I use the star, right? So I use dollar star. And now what, which, what this is going to give me is going to give me the number of parameters sent, right? So what I mean by that is Rafael, Rafael Lima. Now, he, instead of returning the value, it return the quantity of the parameters, how many parameters I sent. So if I say Rafael Lima, YouTube, channel, QEOX, now it's counting the amount, one, two, three, four, five, and six. Know that these need to be uh, spaced. The parameter needs to be spaced. Otherwise, it's just going to count as one, right? So, and lastly, we're going to give a better option, which I already, which I already put it here, which is I'm going to say which options we can have instead of just saying wrong value and I'm going to say echo choose one option below and I'm going to clean here a little so now if I pass the correct value is going to recognize if I pass the wrong value is going to give me all the options that I can use on my menu, right? If it does not recognize any of those. If you recognize, if I said all and something is going to print everything. Otherwise, it's going to give me the options that I should choose. So this is basically what I wanted to show you uh, with Shell. This is very powerful because now I have options. I can create a CLI. I can, I can do a bunch of stuff that's going to help me improve uh, my daily life. And we're going to be covering that in the future. 
it's going to be more advanced uh, notion of shell but then this is the basics that we need to understand in order to be able to go further right thank you for watching if you haven't subscribed please do so and i hope to see you next video